I've taken you from the Imperial City's prison. I was born 87 years ago. For 65 years, I've ruled as Tamriel's emperor. But for all these years, I've never been the ruler of my own dreams. I'm sorry. We'll make sure you'll remain to return to Cyrodiil. Follow the captain, prisoner. Morrowind, Oblivion, or Skyrim? Which one of these Elder Scrolls games has the best beginning? In this video I'll try to give an answer to that based on a few gameplay elements that happen during the intros of these games. I consider the intro part of the games up until the player has freedom to go wherever he or she wants to go. All three are different and interesting in their own way, but at the same time, they're somewhat alike. Wake up. We're here. Why are you shaking? Are you okay? Wake up. This is the 27th of Last Seed, the year of Akatosh 433. In all three games you start as a prisoner captured by the Imperial Empire. In all three cases it is unclear why you are a prisoner and it never becomes apparent during the games. So I guess it's up to the player to decide what your character may or may not have done. Could the Imperials be that evil that they just capture strangers everywhere without reason? They must have had valid points in at least one of the games. I'll let you decide which one that is. However, they are merciful in Morrowind and Oblivion, because you're released right from the start. In Morrowind you arrive by boat, and there seems to be a well-planned release for you to be used by the Imperials, to be their errand boy or girl. But why do they entrust you with an important package? Probably because you're someone neutral yet in the province of Morrowind and to give you a chance of showing goodwill or else. In Oblivion it feels a lot more random. The Emperor happens to go through your cell to use a secret exit out of the Imperial City. He saw you in a dream and you have a big role to play, basically. The Blades let you live and consider you to be free, probably only because of the Emperor's dream. Who knows how long you've been rotting in that damn cell already. Then the Emperor proceeds to give you a very important yeah, artifact, the Emerald of Kings, also to be delivered to someone important, being the Aaron Boy again. It's a recurring thing. But then comes Skyrim, the situation is even more dire here. Sitting in a wagon you ride to your execution, no release here. The Imperials are relentless, probably because of the Stormcloaks that are with you. The Dragon Alduin saves the day by attacking Helgen and you are free to escape with either Imperial or Stormcloak friends. You don't get the message that you're special or needed during the introduction. Hadvar or Vaylov just implies that you should visit Riverwood. But those are definitely not orders. So in Skyrim you are truly free after the prologue. In Oblivion you still have some choice, but still, the Emperor wished it. But then in Morrowind you're almost like a part of the Blades immediately. I can't help but wonder if the next Elder Scrolls games let you start you off as a prisoner. It's kind of tradition to do so and it works nice. But I think I'd like to start with a clean slate next time, a slow, innocent start far from Imperial influence. They seem to be bad news. But as long as the sense of freedom remains, I guess it's alright. Character creation is a mandatory process in all the Elder Scrolls games. They all vary a little, but the basics are quite the same. In Morrowind you don't have many choices when it comes to appearance. You can choose a gender, preset face and of course a race. I could be wrong here, but I think it's interesting that you can choose the exact same races in the three games. I mean, those are all the races living in Tamriel. But I do like the consistency. Oblivion added a lot more fun to the character creation. Dozens of sliders that practically do nothing and characters always end up ugly no matter how hard you try. I think many players just like me spend their first hour in Oblivion playing with those sliders. But it doesn't matter much, because you rarely see the head anyway, especially with a helmet on. In Skyrim the sliders have a little more effect on how well your character turns out, it's only a little better but definitely an improvement. Each race has its unique set of qualities and perks that largely remain the same up till Skyrim. A high elf is most likely a mage and a Nord has more chance to be a warrior, but the choice really doesn't matter that much. Things can be changed during the game as you see fit. However, Morrowind and Oblivion handle this a bit differently. They actually give you the choice which class you want to play and what skills you want to be your major and minor skills. Or create a custom class, so you should just go for the race you want to play and choose your skills later. 
To top it off, you need to choose a birth sign for some extra benefits. In Oblivion, Emperor, Uriel, Septim and Boris present you with the choices, but I like the process in Morrowind a little bit better, because Ergala asks you some funny questions, and depending on the answers, a class is chosen. It can be easily changed though. Skyrim has none of this, it all depends on how you play the game and ultimately I think that's the best way to handle it. It's just an evolution in the RPG genre that makes more sense. Still, back then it was kind of a revolution not to have to pick a certain class. Before I start talking about the story and characters, let's have a look at the locations of the intros. They are all quite different and of course in three different provinces. Morrowind has a very calm, serene start coming off a boat in the peaceful town Sedanin as soon as you get on deck. The odd and mysterious nature of Vardenfell gets laid on you. It works like a charm. This is a magical place for sure. The remainder of the intro plays out inside the less exciting Census and Excise office, filling up some papers and taking some orders. After that, Sedanin awaits you. It's a very pleasant environment to start in, getting to know the world on a small scale. Oblivion sets a far darker mood, starting off in a barbaric dungeon underneath the Imperial City where no man dares to set foot. Well, apart from the brave Emperor, of course. It has a Middle Ages vibe where knights and swords reign and everything is dirty, scary and rotting. At least you know what you're in for. The dungeon changes into a filthy cave and then goes back to the dungeon again. Then to discourage you a little bit more, it tosses you in the sewers. Luckily just for a bit, because once you step out of the sewers into Cyrodiil, shock, awe and then wonder in just a few seconds. That is, when you played the game for the first time when it was released. The greens, the light, the bloomy environment, anxiety makes place for relaxation. And then Skyrim. It's a total shitstorm here. The dirty grimy feel to it is added by the color grey and the cold. From the Middle Ages to the Dark Ages. The town of Helgen maybe once was peaceful, but not anymore. Executions and a dragon attack make the place a little less habitable than Sedanin. The continuation into a fort and then a cave is a little more relaxing, but it's not that different from Oblivion. Once you step out of the cave, you don't get the same feeling of greatness and scale as in Oblivion right away. It's the same grimy vibe, but it depends largely on weather or time of day, I guess. The amazement I felt in Morrowind is definitely there, but I think Oblivion has the greatest wow effect once you step into the world. It feels like a great reward after enjoying the underground sections. The learning process in each installment is there to let you get accustomed with how the game plays, with a focus on combat, conversation and item management. The exploration part comes later. The exception is Morrowind, where the combat part isn't included in the prologue. This game is a lot less hand-holding than the other two in general. Both Oblivion and Skyrim have a more detailed tutorial in place that explains how the mechanics work. Bethesda wanted to reach a bigger audience with the latter games, so it's no surprise that they had to do a little more explaining with these games. In Morrowind you mainly learn how to interact with NPCs, how the dialogue system works and how it's connected with your journal. Secondly, you'll learn to collect items and how to use your inventory, and when it's considered stealing and whatnot. But that's about it, there's still so much to find out after you leave the census office. In Oblivion the first quest is literally named Tutorial. The game guides you through the controls and mechanics while throwing different challenges at you. You'll learn about the dialogue system and that it is greatly dumbed down. But hey, everything is voiced now, by Patrick Stewart no less. The game tosses some humanoid enemies at you, but they are easily disposed of by the blades. You'll learn about item and equipment management more once you're alone. Rats and one zombie present not much of a challenge, while the game is encouraging you to use different methods to get rid of them. The cave part with goblins is a little more challenging, but it never becomes difficult. Here you'll learn about traps and magic users, a great showcase at what Oblivion could do with the engine back then. The challenge level is just right during this first quest, where you'll learn the basics of the game. It even presents alchemy already. In Skyrim the same kind of scenario, learning about the dialogue system and item management pretty quickly, and that is not that different from Oblivion. There's a little more fighting challenge while fighting humans, but on normal this also won't be difficult. Later on, spiders and one beer. Skyrim too encourages you to use different tactics to get the hang of the combat system. Perfectly fine first quest in my eyes if it comes to learning the basics. I think Oblivion has the most interesting challenge during the prologue though. Finally, let's talk about the story in the intro sections and the characters that are involved. As mentioned before, you'll start each game as a prisoner not knowing why you were imprisoned. The Imperial Empire plays a big role in all three games, especially in Oblivion, because you start at the heart of it. 
In Morrowind, you seem to be sent to Saint Anin to do the Imperial's bidding by being their courier. The Dunmer thief Jupe is transferred by boat as well, but that is where your relationship with him ends. You are processed in the census and excise office where Sosusius Ergala awaits, some kind of officer of the Imperials. He is quite kind and tries to know you a little bit better before signing your release papers. Certainly odd that he would release you like this, he must know more. The Imperial soldier Salus Gravius is giving you the actual quest and basically lets you roam free from now on. However, he is kind of forcing you to go and deliver a mysterious package to a man named Caius Cassades in the town Belmora. Besides some random talk about the Empire and Morrowind, you're not learning anything of interest. Morrowind remains a mystery until you find out more. I like this, it gives me the feeling that there is much to discover and that I'll find out soon enough what's going on in this place. It certainly leaves a lot of room for role-playing. You can't pretend to be anyone. I wouldn't consider the intro captivating, especially next to the more eventful start in Oblivion and Skyrim. The story in Oblivion grabs you a little bit more by the throat. Starting in a damp cell, being mocked by another prisoner, Valandreth, in the cell in front of you, a very foreboding tension in the air. Then voices, they belong to a few soldiers, and what the hell does Emperor Uriel Septim himself? The one that gives you the orders in Morrowind indirectly. Apparently there is a secret passageway in your prison cell, and the Emperor saw you in a dream. What a coincidence. The Emperor now knows you are like the Chosen One and has to save Citadel, but the soldiers don't know this yet. There are Blades, a special group dedicated to protecting the Emperor. While following them, the group gets attacked more than once by agents of the cult Mythic Dawn. They want the Emperor dead for whatever reason. Captain Reno falls and the remaining soldiers, Boris and Glenroy, can't prevent the Emperor being killed later on. Uriel said he saw his end coming and before being killed, he gives you the Amulet of Kings. He sees you as a last hope and trusts you fully to find the secret missing heir that nobody knows about. After telling this to the only surviving blade, Boris, he trusts you as well, telling you to find a monk named Joffrey who might know more about this heir. So you are to restore the Empire with the right bloodline on the throne before all hell breaks loose. You do not learn yet why Uriel was killed and what doom awaits Tamriel, but you'll definitely know that evil comes soon and that you have to act quick. Everybody forgets this once entering the world and all urgency is gone, but that's besides the point. It's certainly epic. Lastly, Skyrim, where you enter the province in a car together with two Stormcloaks and a common thief. One of them is Ulfric Stormcloak, the dragonborn Kingslayer that killed King Torik, and the other one is Raylov, just a Stormcloak. Quite the company. An Imperial escort leads you right into Helgen where execution awaits. General Tullius is seeing to it, together with his Thalmor friends. I guess they only care about Ulfric, but the rest needs to go as well. Villagers tend to watch. One man is executed and then you're up. Up to this point I'm very immersed already, more than in Morrowind and Oblivion. It really sets the tone of this game. It's still on rails at this point, but I don't mind. Then the epicness starts. A dragon named Alduin attacks the town, setting everything on fire and creating panic. You manage to run with your Stormcloak friends, evading the dragon as you go. Moments later, Raylof is gone and the Imperial soldier Hadvar takes his place, guiding you to safety. Then the choice between Raylof and Hadvar as you are about to enter Elgin Keep. The stress factor is certainly high here. The choice doesn't really matter, I guess choosing Raylof seems more sensible because the Imperials were trying to kill you just minutes ago. We're not finding out much more about the situation during this section, but I need to mention the creepy torture you'll meet if you choose to go with Hadvar. Dark character indeed. And well, there are a lot of signs that this place is at war. Stormcloaks versus Imperials. Once you're outside, everything is calm again, all the wind flies away, the village is turned to ruins, and anyone who was there has either left or died. Hedvar and Raylof both tell you to go and visit Riverwood to settle a bit after all this turmoil. Certainly a more spectacular intro than Oblivion already. And that one was certainly more eventful than Morrowind. I wonder what kind of epicness will be unleashed upon us at the start of Elder Scrolls 6. It's time to reach a conclusion and an answer. Which of these three Elder Scrolls games has the best beginning? I could be a politician by saying they all have their positives and negatives, blah blah blah. They certainly do, but for me, the winner is Oblivion. To be fair, this might have something to do with Oblivion being the first Elder Scrolls game I've played, but to me it's the most balanced start. With interesting events and not too much craziness going down, and a sense of wonder that comes from leaving the sewers is very powerful. You feel like you're a big part of something big. I also like the combat situations and the general pacing of this intro. Skyrim comes second. 
because this intro feels more polished, like a serious step up from the others. Morrowind, partially because of its age, is the most relaxing one, but nothing much happens. This order is not necessarily the same if you analyze these games as a whole. That's a different story altogether, and that would be much more complicated to rank. So the question, what is the best Elder Scrolls game, will not be answered today. Although I can tell you Arena and Daggerfall won't win that one. They're unplayable. Alright, that's it. Thanks for watching. I hope you like it. Leave a comment if you agree or disagree with me, and have a nice day. What was that? It's nothing. Carry on. Yes, General Tullius. Give them their last rites. They have taken you from the Imperial City's prison. First by carriage and now by boat. To the east, to Morrowind. Fear not, for I am watchful. You have been chosen. These are the closing days of the Third Era and the final hours of my life.